Of all the leaders within the Capital Wasteland, who is most fit to lead the Wasteland and forge a better future? I'm not talking about the smartest, the richest, or the strongest. Rather, someone who embodies all the noble characteristics. Someone who is a Wasteland survivor, tough and knowledgeable about the hardships of everyday working people. Someone who is a man of action, and who doesn't let the dark specter of the Wasteland overshadow their hope for a better world. Who could embody all of this, and still remain in this mortal realm? Why, if you have spent any time in the Capital Wasteland, you have likely met him, leading the only true democracy in the Capital Wasteland. And that man is Dave. Dave embodies all the attributes of a capable leader, all centered on a passion for democracy and representative government. Although born into a life of privilege, he strained under the oppressive weight of King Tom's authoritarian regime and due to his unflagging belief in freedom, was exiled from the kingdom of Tom. This would break most people, but most people are not Dave. He relished the challenge of the wasteland and became one of the greatest marksmen, demonstrating his skill by shooting an apple out of the hand of a raider from across the Potomac. Dave is a world-renowned marksman, known for shooting an apple out of the hand of a raider from across the Potomac. He became a capable mercenary, even being sought out by the Wasteland Estate mogul Alistair Tenpenny. A daring raid on an old military base resulted in failure when Dave's inept team forced him to abandon the mission, the single blight on Dave's impeccable record. Dave had tamed the Wasteland and used the skills he honed to fight for his one true love, democracy. He returned to the Kingdom of Tom and valiantly overthrew the wicked old despot. Although I also inherited my political power from my father when I took over, I formed a republic so the people may elect their leader. Dave's impeachable character would not allow him to tolerate the rich nobility to subjugate his fellow man any longer. And when he could have seized power like so many before him, he instead gave power to the people by conducting the very first election. So grateful were the oppressed masses that they immediately voted Dave to the highest office of the Republic. And Dave continues to ensure that all those old enough to wield a weapon can exercise their right to vote. Now a bastion of democracy, the Republic of Dave enshrined the many free freedoms guaranteed by its noble founder, Dave. So committed to liberty, Dave is the first in the capital wasteland to lift all restrictions on marriage, and he celebrated this milestone by taking his second wife, Jessica. Dave revised the restrictive marriage laws of the Kingdom of Tom shortly after the Republic was formed. Multiple marriages is now considered one of the great free freedoms of the Republic of Dave. All citizens are free to stay or go, but why would they? Why would they leave the one true democratic republic in the capital wasteland? and with it, its fearless leader. Dave is a natural-born statesman, and the intricacies of statecraft and diplomacy come easy to him. So many wish to immigrate to the Republic that early in the year 2077, they had already met their immigration quota. Secondly, after careful consideration, the Office of Immigrant Affairs reports that we've already exceeded our quota for immigration this year. Dave is no stranger to the plight of the common wastelander, and as such, will grant asylum to the weary souls that need it. For a nominal fee. The path to citizenship is demanding, and only those most committed to liberty and justice for all will complete the rigorous process. Having founded all the Republic's institutions, including the Department of Tourism and the Bureau of Dave-like Activities, which, in accordance to the will of the people, ensures citizens engage in only the most wholesome activities that will bring honor to the Republic. A true believer in education and the power of knowledge, Dave funded the creation of one of only three functioning schools in the Capital Wasteland. All children are required to attend and their education is bolstered by the many items Dave collected on his travels as a mercenary. With generous funding from the treasury of Dave, the well-funded school can function as a museum. And Dave just increased the budget for the museum this year, too. I was going to buy books for the children, but this is far more important. 
Crowds line up to see and hear about the many extraordinary events of Dave's life, including, but not limited to, his journey to China. These weapons were used against the USA before the bombs fell. Dave probably acquired these when he walked to China. And his perfect childhood as a child that never cried. To my far right is the baby carriage that our great leader slept in as a newborn baby. Unlike most babies, he never cried and his poop didn't stink. Dave is also committed to funding for educational reform. After a scandal involving a Brahmin skull brought shame to the once untarnished Department of Tourism. Mounted to my left is the very head of the slain death claw that Dave encountered during his quest through the wastes. I know what you're thinking, and no, that's not a Brahmin skull. Brahmin have two heads, so there'd have to be two skulls for it to be Brahmin. Please, no touching. Dave's economic strategy has shown his natural genius, leading to secure access to water and food. We have plenty of food and water here, and the compound is fairly safe. I'm glad the children can be raised here, away from the wasteland. His policies have resulted in lifting 3% of the wasteland's population out of abject poverty, all by himself. And his strong negotiation skills result in Dave gaining the advantage over most merchants. With economic security assured and incredibly fruitful agriculture, the prosperity of the beautiful children of the Republic and future generations to come are all but assured. No stranger to the dangers of the wasteland, the army of Dave is ready, day and night, to defend the free freedoms of the Republic from all those who wish to destroy them. Commander and Chief Dave is well aware of the communist threat, constantly vigilant for the spies that attempt to infiltrate from the wasteland. That's just what I would expect to hear from another spy from the wasteland. You have one hour to leave the Republic of Dave or be executed. No threat, great or small, hidden or exposed, Communist! He is a communist! can overcome Dave and his second in command, Bob. Families are the core of a strong republic, and Dave is a shining example of the perfect father. Having sired many children, Dave provides for, teaches, and protects his gaggle of happy children. What about the wives? What kind of father do they think he is? Dave is a good man. He looks after all the children and makes sure they have plenty to do. He's bought a lot of toys, not that he'd admit it. And what of the children? If we are to hear the truth, surely it would be from the mouth of babes. President Daddy says the people from outside the Republic are bad. There you have it. Food, protection, toys, love. Dave is the father every wasteland child deserves. As a strong believer in equal rights, Dave does not discriminate on the basis of status, gender, or humanness. Everyone, including those outside of the Republic, recognizes Dave's unwavering support of ghoul equality, one of the most noblest of causes, no matter what the vulgar rumors of his sleep-talking may say. <sighs> Goddamn ghouls. These rights and liberties should be afforded to all, and Dave and his followers know that the expansion of the Republic to encompass the entirety of the Wasteland is not an ensured eventuality, it is manifest destiny. Dave is a great leader. He's going to bring civilization back to the Wasteland. One day, they'll say it all started here. Do not mistake his confidence for arrogance, or his firm tone for rudeness. How much radiation have you been exposed to? Not the butterfly, you moron. I meant the kind of leader that holds his office for a life. Dave knows what is best and how to get it. But don't just take my word for it. The constituents of the Republic of Dave love their dear president. Absolutely not. In fact, I'd vote for Dave twice if I could. He enjoys an incredible 100% approval rating, which no other wasteland leader can claim. He commands respect from all of those in the Republic who don't intend on voting for anyone else ever again. As a result, he has won multiple consecutive elections with no end in sight. No way. You'd have to be crazy to run against him. 
If Dave really were so curt, would the people love him so? If he lacked empathy, would his numerous children idolize him like they do? Nay, Dave's incredible force of will is only perceived as egotistical to those who are intimidated or of weak constitution. But what of the propaganda, says the wasteland communist? What of it? Find me a group that does not engage in propaganda, and I will show you a liar. The Enclave with their fake president telling nonsense stories through his robots. Elder Lyons and his holier-than-thou attitude, robbing the wasteland of its technical resources while claiming he cares about its denizens. Some doctor who says he will save the wasteland, but can't even keep track of his own kid. The only thing that one can find Dave guilty of is believing in himself, in liberty, and the pursuit of Daveness that we all strive for. In the ultimate form of humility, and in the strong, stalwart belief in the Republic's democratic institutions, Dave will step down as president if he somehow loses an election. Let's see what we have here. A vote. Me. And another vote for me. A vote for Rosie? Wait a minute. Has somebody tampered with the ballot box? Hmm. After counting the votes, the president is... Rosie! Although this would surely only come as the result of wasteland infiltration and intervention. Dave is committed to the peaceful transfer of power. But so hurt would he be at this kind of betrayal that he would no longer be able to stay at the Republic of Dave. Rosie can't be president. No! This is unfair. This can't be. Fine, I'm leaving. See how you people do without me. Enjoy your new president. The land of his ancestors and the soil that he bled for in order to uphold the standard of liberty would be left behind. Not because our intrepid leader accepts defeat, oh no, but because he envisions a brighter future. A republic so large that it fills the whole wasteland. If the people of the wasteland are generous and respectful, I might deign to annex them. A republic so strong that no ferocious deathclaw could stop it. A republic born in the ashes of the old world and the folly of mankind at the sight of old Olney. I guess you're wondering where I'm going. I'm off to annex old Olney and forge the new Republic of Dave. Don't try to stop me. Where Dave bides his time, planning, waiting, and anticipating his ultimate gift to the world. Please, don't bother him at this time. I warned you. Hey, where? What more needs to be said? Take up arms in defense of the Republic. Release the wasteland from its bondage and cast your ballot for the one true leader of the wasteland. Not the leader we deserve, but the leader we need. No man, ancient or modern, has done more for the progress of humanity, nor will there ever be another after Dave. So, at the ballot box, let the words of Dave guide you to righteousness and victory. Sear into your mind the illustrious words of our dear leader. Freedom is the most free freedom that we can have. This ad has been paid for by the Bureau of Dave-like Activities, all citizens of the Republic of Dave, the Polygamist for Freedom Group, and the National Dave Action Committee.